This is the start of a new profile series I'm going to be running for newer Maverick players, whether they be rookies or just guys you're not familiar with, new acquisitions. At this point, you don't need a profile piece on Luka Doncic unless I went really next level and told you a bunch of stuff about prior to his NBA career. You don't need me to tell you about Kristaps Porzingis, but you might need me to tell you about guys like Josh Richardson and James Johnson and some of these rookies. So today I'm going to start off with one of the picks I am most excited for out of the 2020 draft. The label stuck to Tyrell Terry like an old sticker, tearing away in strips as he struggled to remove it from the expert's assessment of his game. Too small, it read in faded black Sharpie ink. NBA teams and draft experts alike told the Stanford sharpshooter he should go back to school rather than declare for the 2020 draft. But Terry knew, even in high school, he had the skill set to become an NBA player, just as he had when he chose Stanford over schools like Indiana, Iowa State, and his hometown Minnesota Gophers. Terry bet on himself and then doubled down when he declared anyway and then began working to shuck the narrative that his size would limit his potential. Terry was projected to go somewhere in the middle to back end of the first round and was even deemed a borderline lottery talent by some draft experts. Such territory is reserved for the upper half of the first round by teams who failed to reach the postseason the year prior, depending on whether or not those rights have already been traded away. For these high-value picks, the league has a system designed to avoid tanking, though its success is somewhat debatable. Generally, the worse a team's record, the higher its chances for landing a top overall pick. But any team who failed to reach the playoffs has a mathematical chance, no matter how small. For Terry to even be considered a lottery talent after the initial analysis from teams demonstrated a sizable reversal in the narrative against him. The sticker, it seemed, was beginning to peel away among draft experts. It wasn't the first time he'd proven his critics wrong. Terry came out of De La Salle High School in Minneapolis, Minnesota, having won three state championships and nearly pulling off the clean sweep were it not for the Islanders falling in the state semifinals his junior year. Entering his senior season and being the unquestioned team leader, he was rated as a four-star prospect by ESPN, garnering offers from several prominent schools despite his six-foot, 160-pound stature. While by no means an explosive athlete, Terry excelled in many other fields as well, including football and baseball. For many, such athletic gifts would be more than enough, but Terry refused to be limited by his own athletic gifts, taking his academic career just as seriously as any basketball game he'd lace up his sneakers to play in, as he explained to Mavs.com writer Isaac Harris. My parents were hard on me academically, telling me if I didn't get a certain grade I couldn't play basketball, Terry said. Terry fell in love with the idea of academics and appreciated that Stanford held them in the same standard as athletics. As a result, he committed to the Cardinal over his other suitors. And while some may roll their eyes at the idea that a school would hold its athletes to the same standard as other students, Terry's intellect spoke for itself during the pre-draft process when he broke the NBA's IQ record, an achievement he more or less shrugged off. I didn't really find it that particularly difficult, Terry said. I just locked into the test and did what it asked. That IQ was clearly translated on the basketball court for Terry as well, as at Stanford he averaged 14.6 points and 3.2 assists as a freshman point guard. More than that, he shot a ridiculous 40.8% from beyond the arc on a whopping 152 attempts. So while his assist numbers may appear pretty ho-hum for a point guard, he often makes the right play, creating hockey assists where his pass leads directly to the pass that creates the basket. What's more, he won't be asked to fill that role as distributor for the Mavericks, slotting almost perfectly into the void left by Seth Curry as a hyper-efficient knockdown three-point shooter coming off the bench. He can really shoot the piss out of it, Mavs GM Donnie Nelson said on draft night. By simple virtue of playing with 21-year-old superstar Luka Doncic, Terry will see no shortage of quality looks, as Dallas, with Doncic running the show the past couple of seasons, has created the most wide-open looks in the NBA for its three-point shooters. Considering Terry ranked in the 99th percentile on catch-and-shoot opportunities last year, that should make him an incredibly dangerous weapon for Mavs coach Rick Carlisle. 
For me to come into Dallas and play with someone like Luca, who's going to find me, I thrive off catch-and-shoot situations. If he finds me, I'm going to knock that shot down, Terry said. With my shooting ability to space the floor for Kristaps and open lanes, I think for me, I don't know that there could be a better fit for me in the league. While nobody doubted Terry's marksmanship, that old sticker seemed to deter potential suitors as the draft progressed, causing him to surprisingly slide out of the first round despite an impressive skill set and resume. At times, the league can be slow to adapt, and historically speaking, there's a reason you haven't seen many undersized guards lacking special quickness or footwork translate at the next level. Anticipating this, Terry set about transforming his body in the lead-up to the draft, putting on a good 10 pounds and, as luck would have it, growing a couple of inches to stand at 6 foot 3 inches tall. I improved my body quite a bit, Terry said. I have a long way to go, but I made some big changes in regards to strength and athleticism where that narrative is changing a little bit. While Terry wasn't selected in the first round, he didn't have to wait much longer, being taken with the first pick of the second round and, and in his former coach's own words, making for a great fit with Dallas. In the process, Terry became the first one-and-done player in Stanford history and, by simple virtue of no longer playing for the Cardinal, will force the team to alter its style of play moving forward. That's what happens when special talent departs. The Mavs have committed themselves to building around Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis with a plethora of 3 and D weapons. Terry, an offensively savvy scorer with top-tier marksmanship, may not be known for his defense, but he should have the talent around him to lean on, as needed, as he rounds into form on that end. Almost immediately after being taken with the 31st pick, Terry says Doncic reached out to offer his congratulations and to tell him to enjoy the moment. He went on to tell the rookie to hit him up if he needed anything. It means a lot for me to have him reach out that early, Terry said of the text from the Mavs star. With Carlisle scheming him open and Doncic's vision and passing ability finding him routinely for what I can only describe as in-game shoot-around, Terry has the potential to be a major impact player for the Mavericks. It also helps to be surrounded by other shooters like Porzingis and Tim Hardaway Jr., among others. If he can step in and provide some three-point shooting off the bench while furthering his physical transformation, Terry can at last peel away the final remnants of that stubborn label letting his dead-eye shooting do the talking for him. The ball is already in motion, swinging around the perimeter as the defense scrambles to recover. Terry stands open in the corner as Doncic drives to the basket and kicks it out to him. All that's left for Terry to do is square his shoulders and knock it down like another of his three-pointers.